I have a great segment today. It's about gardening and having pets. I'm with Steve Varga from ProGrass, and I know ProGrass works a lot with homeowners that have gardens and have pets. And you have a lot of ideas for us to use for that. Oh yeah, we have a lot of customers that have pets, and we're going to go over a few things today that will mm -hmm. help anybody that has a pet deal with them. Well, I know that animals like to, to lay in the shade, so would this be a nice place for them underneath this tree? Yeah, definitely. Uh, lacy maples provide a nice low-growing uh, habitat for an animal to stay cool and in the shade during hot summer weather. So there's room for either a dog or a cat under there? Oh yeah, if they're pruned up, you want to make sure they're pruned up so the animal can get under, there's plenty of room. And if you don't have a tree, any kind of cool space would be great for Any them. shade, just shade in general is important. Well, what about flower beds or plant beds? What we should be doing there in case plant, um, animals are digging? Well, if they dig or they just walk through the beds, the, the animals will be broken. They're very delicate, and uh -huh. I always re I recommend that they're planted in pots mm -hmm. uh, so they're up above the animal's height. Ah, so then you have a really pretty area here, and the plants are nice and safe. Mm -hmm. the, the animal will usually stay away from them if they're up high. And what about fences? Because I know I have always seen animals trying to escape, and so they're... Mm -hmm. Fencing is important because uh, not only does it provide a barrier, but also it's important to have a, a barrier that, at the bottom of it so they can't dig underneath. And what other hardscape issues should we um, th be thinking about? Patio surfaces? Yeah, hardscapes are really important because dogs can really tear up a wood deck. But mm -hmm. on a concrete patio, that's a lot more durable. Uh, it also provides a trans uh, transition area where the animal can go into the house and be cleaned up before it goes and you know gets muddy paws inside. Ah. And also, I know that their paws are pretty sensitive. They can be digging, but we want to be careful on edging, don't we? Oh yeah, definitely. Edging is really important. I don't recommend edging too often mm -hmm. uh, unless it's something that can be buried very deeply. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, I recommend just cutting an edge with an edging machine. Right, and so you really have to bury those. Yeah, and if edging is put in properly, it's okay, but if it comes up, it can cause a lot of damage to their paws. Okay, and then what kind of plant selection? Should we plant um, things that are really going to be durable? Definitely. There's a lot of plants that are durable. Conifers, um, low-growing evergreens that are, are, are going to be more durable. If an animal runs through it, it won't break. Uh, again, annuals are a lot more delicate and they have to be avoided. Right. And if you do have a dog that's a digger, you can always have a digging space um, somewhere that's out of view from your guests or from your daily activities in the garden. Oh, definitely. You want to have an air The dog has to have some place to go. You right. can't, you can't uh, eliminate everything. So you have to have some place for the animal to dig. So I know we have another garden to visit, so let's go over and see that yard. Okay, great. Thanks. Well, Steve, now we're in Bud's yard, and it's a pretty warm day, so what do we do for a watering issue? Well, one of the best things to do is actually use a stone that has a depression in it that collects water and is a great landscape uh, item. That is a pretty one. Or you could just put out a bowl of water. Yeah. That's really important. And so since they're drinking water, they're going to create another problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, lawn burns from urine are really important to take care of quickly to prevent wild grass from getting in it. Uh, very simply, just take some grass seeds, sprinkle it over the spot, put a little mulch, like potting soil over the top, keep it moist, and it'll be fine. Right. And then you also want to look, when you go to your independent garden stores, for some products that would be animal safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I recommend organic products whenever possible. Always read the label, because not all organic products are necessarily that safe either, but uh, they tend to be safer than most. Uh, organic fertilizers are critical because the animals are on the lawn the most, mm -hmm. and that's important. Also, slug control is really critical to make sure you're using a product that's not going to kill your cat, uh, because cats tend to be in, ver in beds with pots where you have a lot of flowers. So you right. want to make sure you use a product that's safe for them. Right. And if you do have a lawn surface and you use chemicals, just make sure that you keep the animals off it. Just follow the directions. Yeah, just always follow the directions no matter what you're using. Right. And you have another great tip about a um, ground cover. Yeah, the Kinnikinix is a great ground cover. Um, it's used a lot in areas of high traffic or areas where the grass just doesn't grow. So if you can't grow grass there, I'd recommend Kinnikinix. Right. Well, if you have any other questions, ProGrass has a lot of information. They can come out and do designs, and we'll have the website up on the screen, or go out to our independent garden centers. Well, Bud, enjoy your yard. Thanks, Steve. Thanks.